Praise God, brethren. We thank God for giving us another opportunity to come before his presence where we continue to expand on his word, continue to explore his goodness, and as we continue to create a stronger bond between us and him through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the word of God says that no one goes to the Father except through Jesus. And if we need to be connected then to the Almighty God, we need to learn more of his word and get to understand how we create the bond, how we reconnect, how we are restored to the original love. Uh, God is good. The journey is moving smoothly. The word continues to enable us to open our eyes. But also uh, God has given us an opportunity that under whatever circumstances, we are able to hear what he has prepared for us and um, we want to share today you know i always pick uh topics to share from the message for the day i leave out certain things because uh at that particular moment if i'm to scan through it becomes a little bit of work but for purposes of comfort we have uh, to always look back where we have questions, the Holy Spirit will help us. For example, there are messages that I share on my Facebook page and I don't share on YouTube because the time is not enough to share on all platforms. I must make sure that I'm looking in between 20 to 30 minutes so that I don't make them very long and boring. But if you have any questions, you may need to bring them in our comment section. If you have any topic that you'd want us to discuss during this Bible study that has been left behind, you can also post it in the comments and we look through it. Uh, for me, after seasons of reading the Word of God, I no longer have any contradictions. I no longer have any questions except for areas that I am yet to understand. And then when the time comes, normally when I read and I have questions, the Holy Spirit has a way of helping me. Uh, previously, I get a revelation through the messages. I find that the season I'm reading a particular topic, when there is a gap, you go to church and you find that the sermon for the day has been tagged to address a question you have uh, from reading the scripture. I've been so lucky that for me, God connected me with my church where they share about the things for which I have any gaps. And in most cases, I find them addressed or I get a deeper understanding as I am having my quiet time. I see a reflection I reflect on it and the Holy Spirit helps me to understand. I'll give you an example that uh, I was one of the people that always wondered where the children of, Ab of, of uh, Adam were able to find spouses. And I got two uh, strong convictions that if God could make a wife for Adam, he could as well make a wife for Cain and Seth. But also, uh, later I also understood that when you see the Bible does not always talk about the daughters born, it talks about the boys. And uh, it is silent on the girls because until the time of Moses, uh, siblings would marry. You would see that even Abraham and Sarah, uh, they are cousins. So previously... Uh, marrying a sister was not a problem. So it's very possible that Adam and Eve had daughters who became wives of Seth and Cain. But it's also possible that God uh, was 
kind enough to steal out of the rib of the man make for him a wife so those are the the, the convictions i got i've not gone to the theology school i do not know what happens maybe when i have an opportunity also to attend that school i'll have some of these gaps addressed but for me for now that is sufficient for me because there is evidence the biblical that um girls are not always mentioned in the process in the genealogy of the of the family and um, i got so contented with that and i also uh, got to understand as we go along and we are reading the story of moses uh for him to have gotten all the knowledge of the five of the book of genesis and the life before him i strongly believe that that encounter he had with god the 40, 40 days he spent with him in heaven and that encounter where he received the two stone tablets god was able to reveal to him the truth of the life before because you see it's a story that is being narrated and god was very calculative to share the stories that can easily fit together and then moses was able to put it in writing we have a god that reveals to us things that we do not know and he emphasizes it in the book of jeremiah 33 verse 3 and we see daniel grateful to him also for having revealed to him the deep secrets of nebuchadnezzar uh, in uh, chapter daniel chapter 2 verse uh, 22 and we also see jesus emphasizing it in the gospel of john chapter 16 that the holy spirit reveals to us the deep hidden secrets so for me as long as i continue to have a personal relationship with god the gaps that existed because i was reading the scripture in bits and pieces before he has helped me understand because of continuously seeking a relationship so if you find things that are not adding up it is because you lack the wisdom of god and in uh, james chapter 1 verse 5 he says that if you lack wisdom ask he the author of wisdom and he will reveal it to you but also in proverbs chapter 2 verse uh, i think from verse 1 to about 4 there he says that we should seek wisdom and understanding as deeper as we seek gold and silver god knows as uh, us as children of as his children that we always love to seek material things material wealth as opposed to the immaterial wealth which cannot rot and cannot be eaten by insects so uh, we're going to be uh, looking at the call of abraham and uh, i'm going to be reading from genesis 12 up to from verse 1 up to verse 9 now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I, I, I will bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. Uh, who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed so abram departed as the lord had spoken to him and lot went with him and abram was 75 years old when he departed from haran then abram took sarai his wife and lot his brother's son and their possessions that they that they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired in haran and they departed to go to the land of canaan so they came to the land of canaan abram passed through the land to the place of shechem as far as terebith 
tree of Moriah. And the Canaanites were then in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants I'll give this land. And there he built the altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west of the of uh, and the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called the name called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going still towards the south. Praise God. Uh, I want to share a few uh, main indicators in this word. One is Abraham is called and he's told to get to leave his country, leave his family and his father's house to a place which is not known to him. Why is God asking him to leave his father's house? When we look at the life of his father Terah, he had had three sons, Abraham, his brother, the father of Lot, and another brother. Now, Abraham and Sarai, Abraham and Sarai were childless. They were not having children. And Lot's dad, after giving birth to Lot, he dies. And then their other brother, for him, things were going well for them. I strongly believe that God is talking to Abraham because he had seen his heart. He knew he would... He, he would serve him, but he never wanted him to serve him in such a kind of background, such a foundation. So that is one. God wanted to set him apart. When you find yourself in a situation where you're being isolated, think first. You might think that you're not liked or loved. But in most cases, it is because God is trying to set you apart. That's one of the points. But also, uh, it is because God wants to disconnect you from a foundation that is not good in order for you to walk into the blessing of righteousness. And that's what we see when he promises Ab 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 uh, Abram a great future with descendants and this promise is being made to a barren couple they cannot have children you can imagine what was going through the head of abraham when that message was being given to him i'm sure he had so many questions but we see he is a god those who he has chosen when he calls them they obey without asking questions we don't see abraham yet asking questions and um, one other thing that I also uh, learn from this is that um, Abraham is called to move, but he never moves alone. He always carries along Lot. But we shall see as we go along that that, because when God first called him, he was 75. But when he received his blessing, as we go along, he was a, he was. 99 okay. so the, these delays because god knows that the process of training takes a little bit of time so if you are going through a situation and you see it is taking a little bit long just know like as we shall see again in isaiah is that god who called you knows he wants you to understand him and and obey and for us we are blessed we are not like abram because abram didn't have a history to refer to when noah was told to build the ark the events that would require the ark came 100 years later there's a waiting gap of 100 years and for abram when he's called and promised such a big promise of being a great nation a father of a great nation he was 75 but when we see 
uh, him having a child, he's 25, and the child he has only has two children, and the descendants of, Je of Isaac are the ones now that become the 12 tribes that result into the great nation. So here I see uh, a tough challenge for Abram, and he's made a promise too, but this promise... I am sure he didn't know how to tackle it. And I'm also sure as listening to this, God has spoken to us about things, but we don't see a connection yet. We do not know how we are going to jump into that. Personally, I'm also going through that season where the promises have been made and they are seemingly so good. But I always urge you about it because i'm like how and sometimes i want to contradict god and for me this scripture is a scripture that sets me now to the next phase of repentance uh doubting god because i'm sure when we continue to look ahead you will see abraham uh missing a step and because god is talking of a nation in his human wisdom and sarah's wisdom they think of a plan b because they didn't see how it was going to be possible. And likewise, as in human nature, sometimes when God makes a promise to us, we rush out of it thinking that we are helping out God. But what God requires us to do is to be still and trust him to lead us. So what Abraham and Sarah should have done is to go back to God and hear from him once more you tell us that we're going to be uh, a great nation but we are barren how do we go about it and see how god would guide him but all these things are listed down for us to help us understand because we can relate to it in real life especially if you are uh, walking with christ and you're having seasons and you've seen god made promises but you don't even know how those promises are going to be possible then the third thing we see uh god called abram as abram and sarah as sarai and we shall see as we go along that god changed their names and what i learn uh, I'm going to preempt that discussion that sometimes uh, the, the name that you have decides the life that you live. And we are not going to really argue about this. This is true. It has been tested and proven. The one who gives you a name has control over the name they give you. So when God called Abraham, he decided and Sarah, he decided to change their names such that he can eliminate them from the cars of the names they had before the call. And you see, if you continue to read chapter 12, you see another element of sin being introduced in the, in the Bible about lying. All these are the result of a bad foundation. When Abraham goes to Egypt with uh, his wife Sarah during the famine season, and then Abraham tried to to lie to the people there. Sorry about that. That um, Sarah was his sister because he feared they would kill him because Sarah was a very beautiful woman, and um, it's really. Uh, I didn't want to go through the details because the message that I was interested in sharing is that when God calls you, do you have a call of God upon your life? You may want to look at the word of God, how he executes his call. When he called Noah, what happened? When he called Abraham, what happened? When he called Isaac, what happened? When he called David, what happened when God calls you, he makes a promise to you, then he puts, God takes you through the process of preparation. And as we continue to go along, I pray that God will be generous enough to help you see this, that immediately after God calls us, 
the devil also comes after us with his plan and normally his plan if it's not noted early it causes a bit of delay so i wanted to share this briefly i hope it has sunk in uh, we see in uh, in verse 7 of the same chapter 12 when god appeared to abraham and he said that when abraham had obeyed and he was now already in canaan and he was god was showing him the land and he was like i'll give you all this to your descendants and at that point abraham put up an altar what i learned from this is that we need to identify a point in our lives where god speaks to us uh, and we turn such a place into a place of communion with the lord if you're trying to identify a place uh, to put an altar in your house that place which you see in your dreams in your house when god is speaking to you making promises to you it is a place you need to always kneel and pray from that is deep as we continue to go along we shall see more altars being set and encouraged that we have a place of communion with the lord in our houses in our places where we stay where we can always come to him and he will speak to us and uh, it's important abraham did it and everything like i said that is in the bible it is meant to teach us how to build a relationship with god remember jesus teaches us how to fight but the old testament teaches us how to build relationship it's there the case cases in point of the kind of relationships that we should be aspiring to have the word of god is not an ancient book it is a book that is alive and we can relate to it today and it helps us to build a strong relationship with god so thank you for listening in may god bless you have a beautiful evening bye bye